Okay, good evening everybody. Welcome to Griffin Center for Healthy Living up in Quarry Walk in Oxford, Connecticut. Uh, this is, uh, you're playing host to a part of our Healthy Living series here up at Quarry. Uh, today we're gonna be featuring how to do and prepare a healthy uh, Mediterranean grain bowl. Um, please stay tuned for other series uh, featured in this set that we're gonna be offering for you this evening, uh, other evenings uh, during the course of time here. I want to introduce our staff here today. We have Heller Milligan, registered dietitian here, that's going to be going through a didactic portion of this uh, evening. And then we have Chef Daryl Murphy, who's going to be um, preparing for us tonight. So we're going to be going through this. Um, if there's any questions, please, please feel free to engage uh, the staff and ask accordingly. Uh, and Without further ado, I think we'll let Heather continue on now with the uh, presentation. Thank you, Heather. Delicious, satisfying way to eat. Okay, so it's important to note that this is truly about a lifestyle. These recommendations are not to instill immediate health changes, but to encourage long-term, sustainable daily choices that positively impact one health, one's health. A diet is typically programmed to have a beginning and an end. Diet is a word that comes from the Greek word dietia, which means a way of life or lifestyle. The most popular translation of the word diet in the U.S. is a special course of food to which one restricts oneself, either to lose weight or for medical reasons, versus the one more true to the base meaning of the Greek heritage, two, the kinds of food that a person, animal, or community habitually eats. It's time to change the dialogue. Okay, so the Mediterranean diet is based on traditional foods from countries that surround the Mediterranean Sea. Countries such as Greece, Turkey, Italy, Spain, France, Egypt and Algeria, to name more than just a few. But as you will see, we can easily enjoy uh, this lifestyle with just shopping you know, in our local supermarket. We don't have to travel. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna just go through eight simple steps for eating the Mediterranean way. Um, it's pretty simple. So we'll start with number one, eat lots of vegetables. Um, so this is more moving towards um, more plant-based eating. So you want to try and fill half of your plate with vegetables at lunch and dinner and make that the main focus of your meal. You can also add vegetables with your breakfast meal as well, like in an omelet um, or scrambled egg whites and add vegetables to that. So number two, change the way you think about meat. So instead of typically making the meat the main part of our meal, trying to make the meat a smaller part of our meal. So having the vegetables kind of be the star of our plate and the meat more of like a garnish or a smaller portion on the plate. Okay, number three, enjoying some dairy products. Um, so this can be in the form of such as uh, Greek yogurt, regular yogurt, um, and a variety of cheeses. Number four, eating seafood twice a week. So seafood helps our brain and heart health. Um, some choices listed here, uh, tuna, herring, salmon, shellfish, other fish. Um, these are gonna have a lot of our omega fatty acids in them and that's gonna help our brain and heart health. So trying to make uh, seafood part of our <clears throat> weekly routine. Okay, number five, cook a vegetarian meal once a week. Um, at least once a week. Again, this is more moving towards plant-based, um, and that's what Chef is going to demonstrate is actually a vegetarian uh, meal, so he'll demonstrate that. Six, using good fats. Um, I believe today Chef's going to use olive oil as one of our healthy fats, um, but using good fats, so thinking extra virgin olive oil, nuts such as, such as walnuts and almonds, avocados, this is just to name a few. Number seven, switching to whole grains. Um, so whole grains are higher in fiber, so fiber can help us feel fuller for longer. 
So switching to things like whole wheat or whole grain bread instead of white bread, brown rice instead of white rice, even a whole wheat pasta instead of a regular pasta. Um, so making that switch to whole grains. Number eight, for dessert, eat fresh fruit. So saving sweets like cakes and cookies for a special occasion and holidays, not as an everyday you know, thing to eat. Okay. So Mediterranean diet, it's more than just good food. We also want to look for ways to be active. Um, so whether that's examples here, dancing, walking, swimming, biking, um, gardening, hiking, just finding a way to move each day and be active. Um, Looking for ways to incorporate more movement in your day-to-day -day lifestyle. So parking further away, taking the stairs, taking many short walks throughout the day. Um, look for a hobby that gets your heart rate up, like hiking or yard work or even a dance class. And if you have children playing sports they may like as a family, basketball, soccer, things like that. Okay. Um, and again, more than just good food, spending time with family and friends. So making our mealtime more enjoyable, you know, um, when we have family gatherings, which now we can do more without COVID, so. Okay, so now we're gonna go through what's called the Mediterranean diet period, or, you know, what parts really are incorporated in this Mediterranean lifestyle. So we'll go through each one. Um, so vegetables. Focus on eating all the colors of the rainbow. This will help keep the variety high and include different vitamins and minerals found in different colors of vegetables. If choosing frozen, skip anything with added sugars, sauces, and if choosing canned, choose the low sodium options. Um, and there's some options listed on here that are good. Okay, grains, mostly whole. The daily fiber recommendations vary between 25 to 35 grams per day on average for adults. Reports show that Americans consume less than 15 grams per day. Simple switches would be changing to 100% whole wheat bread versus white bread. So there's like three grams of fiber per slice in the whole wheat bread compared to less than one gram of fiber per slice for white bread. So that's more than double that amount of fiber in just one slice of bread for that switch. Okay, healthy fats. Choosing healthy fats and oils in your diet that contain omega-3s may offer health benefits, including reducing inflammation, lowering the unhealthy or bad cholesterol levels, helping improve good cholesterol levels, and supporting overall heart health. Healthy fats are higher in unsaturated fat, which is liquid at room temperature. Fats that are more solid at room temperature are high in saturated fat. So an easy example would be olive oil versus butter. And today we're gonna to use olive oil, but there are a variety of different oils you can use that are healthy. Um, and not just oils, again, your other healthy fats can include things like avocados, olives, nuts, and fish. Okay, so beans, seeds, and nuts, uh, the benefits are exponential. They are high in fiber, protein, vitamins, and minerals. You can use these foods as snacks or in place of or to mix with animal protein. So again, if you wanted to do a vegetarian meal and make sure you have some protein in there, that's when you can add things like beans and seeds and nuts um, for some extra protein in your meal and, and help fill you up in addition to the vegetables. And there's some examples listed here. Um, again, I think we had hummus prior to this program, so there's a good example right there. Okay, so fruit. Just like your vegetables, eat the rainbow to increase the variety of nutrients you will receive. If choosing canned or dried fruit, always pick versions without added sugar that's packed in its own juice or water. Frozen fruit is a great addition to hot cereal or to use in a smoothie recipe. Frozen food, fruit is also a more affordable way to purchase out of season options all year round. And the frozen fruit is just as nutritious as the fresh fruit. If not more nutrient uh, value in the frozen fruit, it's picked at peak and then they freeze it. So just as much nutrition if you're thinking frozen versus fresh. 
So um, that's why it's good to buy these things, you know, when we're out of season. I like to keep frozen berries on hand in my freezer. Again, just plain frozen berries, no added sugar or anything like that in it. And you could just throw it in some Greek yogurt, throw it in oatmeal, throw it in a smoothie. Um, so it's good to always have that on hand in the freezer. Okay, fish and seafood. So it's great to choose a variety of fish and seafood weekly. Options in the first column are higher in the beneficial omega-3 fats, so like your salmon, tuna, sardines, anchovies. While most other choices are very lean to little or no fat, except what you may use in cooking methods. Okay. And again, our omega-3 fatty acids, that's good for our brain health, that's good for helping to um, you know, increase our good cholesterol levels. Okay, dairy. So cheese should be consumed in moderation with portions of one to two ounces to reap the benefits while not overdoing it. Yogurt or low-fat milk contain calcium and vitamin D, which is essential for bone health. So a good goal is four to eight ounces per day of either choice. Um, so if you choose something like a Greek yogurt, that tends to have a lot more protein in it than regular yogurt. Um, and then these are some um, examples of cheeses listed here that are going to be um, a healthier low-fat version. So uh, American cheese is not listed there. <laughs> okay, eggs and poultry. Eggs are a great source of protein with seven grams of protein for one large egg along with the other nutrition benefits noted. Uh, daily recommended protein intake varies per person's height and weight, but it's typically much less than most people think. And I always suggest consulting with a registered dietitian to learn about your specific goals. Um, everybody's needs are gonna be different. But typically we don't need as much protein as everyone thinks. Again, that's gonna be dependent on your activity level, your height, your weight, all of those things. Okay, so once in a while foods. The evidence between red meat consumption and overall health and longevity is poor. Research shows it can increase your risk of premature death by up to 20%. So we can eat red meat, we just wanna to choose to eat it in smaller amounts and we wanna choose you know, lean cuts of red meat. So it's not new news that one shouldn't eat sweets regularly. Foods high in simple sugars and saturated fats are also linked to poor health outcomes. So keep these treats for special occasions and in smaller amounts. So again, you know, holiday time comes around, we can eat some sweets, a birthday, a celebration. Um, we just don't wanna be eating these on an everyday basis. Okay, so water. All right, your body depends on water to survive and makes up about 60% of your total body weight. So you, want, you can use your body weight to figure out how much water you should be drinking daily. You divide your body weight in half and convert to ounces. So for example, um, a 150-pound person divided by two would be 75. Therefore, the goal would be to drink 75 ounces of water per day, or about nine cups. Typically, I tell most people, try to eat um, drink eight ounces of water per day, and um, eight ounces is what one cup is. Um, so you wanna have that. Again, if you're not a person who likes plain water, you can flavor it. I put like some fresh lemon, some fresh lime, some fresh fruit, and just kinda infuse your water that way. And sometimes that helps people, you know, drink it. Some people just don't like plain water. Okay, so Wine, all right, wine does contain some health benefits in the form of antioxidants. These antioxidants are specific to heart health, but again, all in moderation. So the recommendation is one glass a day for women, and that would be equivalent to the five ounces, or two glasses a day for men, equivalent to 10 ounces total, okay? And grape juice can offer some of the same benefits. Okay, so the Mediterranean diet um, has many health benefits as listed here. You can help reach weight loss and management goals, help lower your risk of heart disease and high blood pressure, because again, this is a diet that's gonna be high in our healthy fats that can help with that. Help fight certain cancers and chronic diseases, help reduce asthma. Um, 
help with diabetes and manage blood sugar. And again, the way we can manage blood sugar is because we're eating foods um, that are high in whole grains. And whole grains are higher in fiber. So what fiber is going to do, it's going to slow down digestion. And that slow digestion is going to help our blood sugar. So if you think about when you eat something like white rice or white bread, it gets digested very quickly, and we can quickly get a spike in our blood sugar. When we're eating something that has fiber in it or whole grains, like whole wheat bread or brown rice or any type of whole grain, it takes longer to digest. So there's going to be a slower rise in blood sugar. So that's why they say, you know, um, choose your carbohydrates wisely. So, okay. Okay, so these are some examples of some diet swaps. Um, you know, for example, instead of using mayonnaise on your sandwich, you can use hummus. This is just to um, give you some healthier ideas. Instead of butter, you can use olive oil. You can use a nut butter. I actually like using an almond butter, like a raw almond butter. You can use peanut butter as well. I always try to buy the all natural version. So when you look at the label, just look at the ingredients. It's either just gonna say almonds or it's just gonna say peanuts. You don't want to have anything that says like um, palm oil or you know sugar in there. You're getting you know extra fats and extra oils in there that are not necessary. Um, instead of putting meat in your pasta sauce, you could do more vegetables in your sauce. Um, I know we've done like a cauliflower bolognese sauce, which is excellent, and it actually is um, a sauce that has cauliflower and walnuts in it. So um, instead of using meat, so that's an idea. Um, and then again, instead of the, the sweets like the chocolate cakes, you could do something like um, baked fruit with yogurt. Um, instead of, you know, bagels and muffins for breakfast, you can do like an oatmeal with berries, yogurt, granola, some ideas there. Okay. So this is some more information on the Mediterranean diet. Um, Old Ways is a website you can go to, and they have a lot of good uh, recipes. There's a lot of good information on there. So if you want, you can go to this oldwayspt.org and get some more information that way. And this is just more about Old Ways. A lot of this information was adapted um, by them. So you can go to their website, and they'll have a lot more information. Um, but at the end of today, we do have um, the recipe that Chef is preparing, along with I have some other um, Mediterranean lifestyle recipes as well for you to take home. So Chef's going to demonstrate one, but we'll send you home with more than one recipe. So, And that concludes my part, unless you all have questions for me. Does anyone have any questions for Heather? Yes. I noticed that vegetable oil wasn't an option for the oils to choose from, and I was wondering if there's any reason why. So, um, no, it's, it's usually, yeah, it's usually not as healthy as vegetable oils. We tend to use either a canola oil, an olive oil, avocado oil, so more, more of those types of, yeah, plant-based oils. That was a great question. Yes. <laughs> oh, we have another question. All right, hang on. So I noticed in the presentation, um, the big portion of it was talking about like eggs incorporated in your diet. Mm -hmm. Is that whole eggs or is it just exclusively talking about egg whites? So it really depends on, you know, if you are at risk of having high cholesterol. I will say um, most of the protein in the egg is in the egg white and the cholesterol is in the yolk. Oh. Um, so it is okay to still have like, you know, two to three egg yolks per week, but if you're someone who's concerned about your cholesterol, you can switch to egg whites, um, and then, because that's where all the protein is, and is in the white, so. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else have any great questions here? All right, well, Heather, thank you. Can we yeah. have a little round of applause for Heather? Thank you, all right. Thank you. So, so the, it over to the, Chef. The, the teaching portion is done, and we're gonna go to the actual live demo with Chef Daryl Murphy here, um, and let's see what he has in store for us. comfortable and as open as possible. So uh, for this demonstration, let's pretend that you are my house guests and I'm just showing you something that I made, I prepared for you guys uh, for coming over, okay? So what we have today is a Mediterranean grain bowl. 
Our grain of choice is quinoa. Uh, quinoa is uh, one of the super grains because it's very high in protein. Um, but this uh, recipe can be substituted with barley, with farro, uh, with frica, or with millet, some of the other uh, not so popular grains, okay? Um, so the, uh, the dish consists of cauliflower, sweet potato, garbanzo beans, and we have a vinaigrette that will be topped over it um, that is made of currants, mustard, curry, olive oil, vinegar, um, and ginger, all right? So it's, it has a couple of different flavors that maybe you wouldn't think of putting together, but I promise you it all comes together great. All right, so the stars of the show are the veggies. We have a head of cauliflower here. Uh, when you go to the grocery store, what you want to do is make sure that the cauliflower is not bruised. Uh, it's not, it has no uh, sore spots. When I say sore spots, I mean they're like wet. You kind of mush it in a little bit. You don't want any of that in your, any of your produce whatsoever. Um, you want to make sure all the green parts are green and all the white parts are white. That's as simple as I could put it, okay? Uh, sweet potatoes. Um, interesting enough, yesterday, uh, my wife and I was watching something on TV, and it was about sweet potatoes versus yams, right? We actually cannot, in, in New England, get yams. We can't grow yams here. So a lot of us around the holidays will say, oh, we're having candied yams for, for dinner, but we're really just having sweet potatoes, all right? So the candied yam and the yam itself is very indigenous to very hot places, Africa. Uh, they just started growing it in Florida, places like that. So we can get it, but seldomly will you see it in your grocery stores, right? We'll see most of the time just the sweet potatoes. So when you somebody says, oh, I cooked yams, nine times out of 10, it's really just a sweet potato, all right? So with this dish, um, I try my best to cut things up um, so that they're all bite-sized pieces. We want everything to cook uh, evenly. You don't want to have crunchy sweet potatoes, but extra mushy cauliflower, right? You want everything to kind of cook evenly. So you want to make sure that your pieces are kind of cut all equally, right? Uh, we also have some garbanzo beans in there as well. Uh, garbanzo beans are, are super popular, right? Everybody loves hummus. You had hummus today. Uh, usually you find them canned in the stores, but you can also find them dry. Any dry beans you use, you want to make sure you soak them overnight or soak them for a minimum of two to three hours any beans that are, you're using that are dry. Um, but we use canned, we use, typically use canned um, just because we're producing for so many people and we really seldomly have the time to sit and wait for beans to kind of soak overnight, right? Um, so with the cauliflower, what we wanna do is cut it right in half. And then we peel the leaves off. The leaves are not edible, they're very bitter. Um, if you do um, decide to use like the greens, you're gonna have to cook them for a very long time. They're very fibrous. Um, they don't have much flavor. That's why you kind of don't see it around in restaurants or things of that nature. Uh, so you wanna peel that all off. Once you get all of that peeled off, you wanna start cutting out your florets. Um, and I love to cut the cauliflower in half because you could kind of see, it's like a little tree, right? You just wanna cut it at the, 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 the branch. All right, and give you nice sized pieces. If it's too big, you just cut that big piece in half. Right, I love cooking because it's very common sense. It's not a lot of uh, secrets to it. Um, experience is what makes a chef as good as he is or as good as she is, it's experience really. Because everything else is pretty much common sense and it's just regular. Um, the more you're around and the longer you're around, the more things you pick up. There's tons of tricks that you guys probably use at home that I don't even know about, you know, but that's just the way cooking is. That's why I love it. Uh, you're always discovering new things. Um, it's just vast. The information for food is so vast. That's why I love to cook, you know. So, like I said, you just want to cut right at the branch here. And what I do is just pull it right off. It gives you nice florets. Piece by piece. I like them nice and, uh, what do they call it? Some people say chunky. Um, the culinary term to make it sound fancy is, uh, what do they call it? Um, it's slipping me right now. Whenever it comes to me, I promise you, I'll let you know. All right? That's eluding me right now. All right, so that's pretty much that. Sweet potato. I'm going to save this because this is so beautiful, I don't want to waste it. But we would peel it, peel it, cut it in half, cut it in quarters. Actually, let's just do it. How about that? So we peel it. Um, use a peeler. This is, you know, for the more skilled and comfortable with knives, right? But we peel it, 
cut it in half. And then I like to cut the halves in half. I have a very tiny cutting board. Can you guys see that? It's extremely small, but I'm going to make it work, I promise. Okay. All right. Get that cleaned up. So does everyone here like uh, garbanzo beans? And if you don't mind, I'm going to remove that for a second. It's very hot back here. Um, garbanzo beans, everybody good with garbanzo beans? Everything gets over here? Okay. So I like to cut them flats and cut these flats into like sticks. And then we get our little petite dice there. You see that? And we have this, the dice. From there, what we want to do is get a bowl. We don't have one here. I was looking for one, trying my best. So let's pretend that this is a bowl, all right? So you get your sweet potato, your cauliflower. Let's sit that there. And it's very easy. So this is one of those dishes where, you know, it's very hard to, to, to mess it up. It's nothing complex about it. Take a little olive oil. You guys will get the recipe. This calls for about a couple tablespoons of olive oil. We put that in there. And here's the infamous salt bay seasoning here. Put it in there just like that. And you want to toss it around. Coat it evenly. So what the olive oil does is it helps the seasonings at, 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 uh, stick to what we're cooking, right? We want to get it nice and coated because you want the flavor. Uh, most people stare away from uh, eating healthy because they don't think it's going to taste good, right? That's the big myth of, you know, eating healthy. Um, in addition to, I don't know why, but uh, in the States we make it so easy to eat unhealthy, right? Dollar menus and, you know, the time, everybody's in rush for time and they can't seem to find the time to make dinner sometimes so you know we're going to stop here we're going to get something that's very unhealthy very cheap right it could be a little costly to eat healthy uh whenever we're buying all these different vegetables and things of that nature but if we make it taste good we have some incentive to eat a little bit healthier any questions so far no nothing okay when we're roasting things like cauliflower, broccoli, carrots, sweet potatoes, things that are really dense and could be really fibrous. We want to cook them on high temperatures, right? So our cauliflower, sweet potato, garbanzo bean mixture is going to go into the oven for 25 and be in there for about 25 minutes. And then it's going to come out like that. There I see that. Actually, let's step around. We're free, right? You're at the house, right? You're in the living room. Can everybody see that? All right, we want a little color on it, but we also want everything to be very tender, very flavorful. And when these things caramelize, you see the brown spots on the cauliflower? That's the sugar actually in the vegetable kind of caramelizing. A lot of people don't know that. They think that it's just the heat and it's kind of burning the food. No, that's the sugar that's in uh, the vegetables. And a lot of vegetables have sugar in them. A lot of things that, let's say your children didn't like growing up uh, or don't like right now, Roast it instead of steaming it. Roast it instead of uh, sauteing it. That sugar comes out and it's more palatable for, for children. This is very hard for me to make my four-year-old eat vegetables, but when I roast it, he's more likely to, right? Um, either that or I have to threaten him. There's a lot of threatening going on, I can tell you that. He is very picky and he gets that from my wife, but I'm not complaining. All right, so this is what that looks like whenever it comes out. I have my dressing here. Now everything in here is pretty much in its raw state. So what we need to do is blend this. So if you have a blender at home, a food processor at home, or an immersion blender like I'm going to use, which is this piece of equipment here, makes everything easier, right? I bought um, the one that I have at home off of Amazon for about 30 bucks. And I use it more than I, th I thought I would. Right? I'm making tomato sauce. A lot of us, you know, either put it in a blender, we're chopping it up real fine. Some people use a, a ricer. There's a lot of different thing, ways to do it. Uh, more than one uh, way to skin a cat. But 
I like to my, so use my immersion blender and I blend all, everything up, put it in the pot, get it going. So let's blend our sauce, which will go over the top. That's just for dramatics. I wonder if I could stretch. Can you guys see? No, right? How about now? All right. So if you can see, it's just working that stuff around in there. And like I said uh, earlier, this will be for our dressing. Turmeric, curry, currants. Uh, the recipe actually says dates. We had no dates in house, so we're using currants. Something sweet um, in that current, uh, that date family, raisins, um, prunes. I dare you. But you could if you wanted to. Uh, but we're going to use currants. And then we'll taste it, and then you just season it uh, to your liking. Salt, pepper, things of that nature, right? So we let it go. It's going to take a while. I don't want anything chunky in here, right? We have fresh ginger. If you were to get uh, a chunk of ginger, it wouldn't be pleasant, right? So we want to make sure that it's all blended in here, nice, smooth. That's what we're looking for. It's about there. Let me give it a couple extra seconds just because I like this piece of equipment. All right. Move it around a little bit. Get all those nooks and crannies. And we're good. So what you want to do now is you want to taste it. And then according to your likes or dislikes, you will adjust it if it's not really you know, enough salt. Pinches, add pinches of salt at a time. You can always add salt, you can never take it out once it's in, right? They teach you that in culinary school. So we got a nice, smooth sauce here. So Heather was talking about the Mediterranean diet. This would be uh, more than likely found in like Turkey, right? Heavy uh, Muslim population, a lot of curries and things of that nature. So a lot of turmeric, turmeric is a very, very popular spice that you see uh, more often now on TV and your grocery stores. I can remember years ago you would never find uh, find fresh turmeric in a grocery store but now it's there right We have to stay you know up with the trends. That just happens to be delicious. I, I, I don't want to toot my own horn but that's what it is okay So that's pretty much the dish. what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put everything together. Um, any questions please give me one. Give me a random one. Yes, ma'am. White vinegar. White vinegar. Uh, it was actually si apple cider vinegar. So um, let's talk about the vinegars for a while. I find that uh, most of the time when you have something sweet, we lean towards apple cider vinegar, right? So if we were making uh, one of our summer salads, coleslaw, potato salad, macaroni salad, apple cider vinegar will go in there because that dressing is a little, a little sweet, right? Um, especially the coleslaw. Um, white vinegar, red vinegar, those are more for vinaigrettes that are going to go over uh, a leafy lettuce, something like that, cucumber salad, things of that nature. Um, out of all three, red vinegar is my favorite because it's just, I like that tart, tart, you know, vinegar taste. All right. And just because this is my house, I'm going to clean this up a little bit and somebody's going to think of another question to ask me. Somebody, please. Yes, ma'am. I wish I, I wish I could elaborate on that more. You're telling me something right now. Where'd you uh, Where'd you read that? Okay. I, I'm finding that uh, turmeric is is becoming uh, one of the holistic ingredients that a lot of people are using to, for ailments, for uh, skin blemishes, for lots of different things. Ginger is another one of those things that you you know. Sore throat, put ginger in tea, with a little honey, you know? So I, I feel like it's one of those very versatile um, spices um, that is coming to the forefront, and I wouldn't be surprised if that was absolutely 100% true because, you know, food is, is also medicine, right? And that's what we're here for because a lot of people, you know, they don't consider food medicine. They just say, oh, it's something to eat, 
to fulfill my, but actually it's to sustain yourself, uh, to keep you healthy, to keep you lean, to keep you fit, to keep you moving. I recently turned 40 and all of the myths are true. As soon as you hit 40, it's like, what's going on, right? I, I can't just hop out the bed anymore. You kind of got to roll out. This is all true. I didn't think it was true. And I can remember, you know, teasing my older friends whenever they told me that this was, ah, it's all talk. You, if you keep active, that won't happen. It happens. I don't know. Some God did it. I don't know why he did it, but he's 40 is the age. Tell everybody, you know, once you hit 40, you're going to, it's going to go downhill. But you know what? I'm making the best of it. Exercise more than I ever have. I just want to kind of sustain everything I have, right? Three sons, no daughters, but you know. We want to be around for them for a while. So let's put this stuff together. You know what? I already have that there. So let's do this. What I have here is the quinoa, which I would tell you to follow uh, the packaging, right? Because everything is different. You can get a red quinoa and it cooks longer than white quinoa. You can get a white quinoa and it cooks longer than red. Or you can get a blend. They try to trick you like that. And then you follow those uh, cooking instructions, right? Um, so it's just water um, in, in the grain. I like to add like broths to it. It gives it more flavor, right? So this was cooked with a little vegetable broth um, to give it a little bit more flavor. Uh, water is used to put out fires. We like to use things that give your food flavor, right? So I have here some quinoa that was cooked in a vegetable base, vegetable stock. And what I want to do is heat it up because once we get going, I don't want you guys to lose any of the flavor because it wasn't warm enough or hot enough. So I'm going to heat it up just to taste. And then I'm going to start plating this all up for you guys. Any questions? No? Yes. You can use uh, frozen cauliflower. I don't like frozen cauliflower because it's very temperamental. Um, a lot of the frozen vegetables are, right? You could buy frozen cauliflower, frozen broccoli, you put it in a pot with a tablespoon of water, you walk away for two minutes, you come back and it's mush, right? I, that's why I don't tend to uh, like to use um, frozen vegetables, uh, unless it's corn or peas or something like that. Those things don't really typically over, overcook. Um, but having uh, fresh broccoli and, and it lasts longer, right, in the fridge. Um, um, then let's say the frozen vegetables that you cook and then now if you have leftovers it's going to sit and it's going to kind of get that uh, that mush that you really don't like that the fridge and the freezer gives to it. Um, I could tell you that I go shopping with my, my wife we buy heads of broccoli and sometimes it doesn't get cooked for a week or so but it's still good you know and that's why I like fresh in and whenever we go to cook it and we steam it usually two minutes it's done you know so um, the frozen broccoli is kind of, you know, you got to follow the packaging. But even when you do that, it still, to me, comes out overcooked. So I don't typically like to use that. Just like rice. Just like rice. So what, what you're doing whenever you do that is you're wrenching off um, some of the starchy components that would be in uh, quinoa. It's not a starch, it's a grain, but it does have some starchy components to it, and a lot of people rinse it, so it does, it does, they don't get that pastiness that comes with like a rice if you don't rinse it or something like that. So, ah, not long at all. Kind of, yeah, it's a quick rinse. Kind of work it in your hands a little bit, kind of get all of that off of there, and then it should be uh, home selling after that. All right, who's ready to taste? Everybody? Two, four, six, eight. I had a gym teacher. Every time he used two, four, six. I, I never got why he, he couldn't just, you know, count normally. Okay. Uh, Heather, would you give me a hand if you don't mind? Heather's my Vanna White. Yeah. Um, actually, in this drawer, there's um, some smaller sizes for you. I don't want you drowning in those extra larges. new fancy stuff, right? I unfortunately have to cook with a glass top at home because my wife refused to get a gas stove. Okay. That's extremely rough. 
I've had gas my whole life, and then she just went and switched it up on me. It's a it's a travesty. I promise you. All right, so I'm going to give you a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And we will not forget the dressing, I promise you, because that's the star of the show. <laughs> um, Heather, if you wouldn't mind. Renata? If you wouldn't mind just spooning some yep. of this over, and then I'm going to follow you with the dressing, okay? So everyone here is a, an employee of the hospital. I see I, a lot of you are familiar uh, faces, but I can't say that I see everyone. Somebody's bringing their lunch to work. Who's bringing their lunch to work? <laughs> no? That's all set. Thank you so much. Thanks. Well, do them. I'll let you do them. Sit them here, and then we'll go yeah, after them. Okay? I'm not gonna lie, I think I like the currants better than the dates. Um, dates are a little bit sweeter than currants are. Um, and I don't necessarily want my food to be sweet when it's supposed to be savory, if that makes sense to you. The currants, however, give it a nice balance. And this is a dish that we feature in the calf often. Uh, we do uh, grain bowls once a week. Um, so you see green molds very often, um, but this one is the most popular. Uh, we often try to do the same dish, but do it better. So you may have seen the garbanzo beans um, toasted for a crunch factor. That's something else we can do. Um, and that's very simple. You would just salt, pepper, olive oil, sheet pan, put it in the oven for about 10, 15, 20 minutes. When it starts to kind of crisp up, you take them out, let them sit, cool. Now you have a new crouton, right? You don't have to use bread. Now we have garbanzo bean croutons. Like I said, food is, is very fun, right? Do whatever we want with it. All right, if you guys want to come on up, and uh, we have uh, flatware here for you, and we will serve you. And we have one, two, three, four, six ready to go right now. Actually, you know what? Okay. I'll bring it to some. Okay, no problem. Oh, no, nah, I'm good. One for you, boss. There you are. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Okay. Is that eight? Yeah. I think we need one more. I want to give one to, to Mike as well. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Give it to all you guys. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Two more all together. Okay. It's the dressing, right? And some of you were here when I walked in, right? So you saw how fast it was for me to put it together. Um, the vegetables were all raw when I walked through the door. Uh, so it literally took me 25 minutes to create this whole dish, right? What I like to do when I have something that I'm roasting and something that will be cooked on top of the stove is, whatever I'm roasting typically will go in first, and then I would put my quinoa on. So by the time that the roasting was done, the quinoa will be done at the same time, and everything is done hot, ready to go at the same time, right? Mike, this is for you, boss. Mm -hmm. Oh, you already got it. Okay, awesome. Any questions? Awesome. I like quiet when it's time to eat. That means it's good. <laughs> awesome. Chef Daryl, that was awesome. I appreciate that. Was that. Awesome. Thank you this very much. This looks great. I'm going to hold on to it for just a Absolutely. second here. 
so everyone has a nice dish in front of them. So we can still take some questions for Chef Daryl, unless we'd rather just be quiet and, <laughs> and uh, work on some of this delicious food that Daryl's made for us. The biggest compliment right there. That's when the it. kids are not talking at dinner, a daddy chef knows wants, score. when it gets quiet, it's yeah, always a good thing. That's always thing. great. Mm -hmm. So as, the, uh, as our participants finish their uh, taste of this uh, delicious Mediterranean grain bowl, we want to thank everyone for coming again today to the uh, Center for Healthy Living. Uh, again, this is just one uh, of a part of a healthy living series that we're going to be doing. Uh, there are some topics that we will be reintroducing down the line, eating on a, uh, eating healthy on a budget. Uh, we have a nice soul food menu that's coming to you. Uh, among some things, we have another one, Farm to Table, which will be done with a partner of ours. Um, so there is more to come. I want to thank you guys for all coming this evening. I want to... Let's give a round of applause to Chef Daryl. Thank you. And for Heather for a great presentation. And um, we look forward to seeing you guys soon again. Um, and keep in mind that as the restrictions for COVID lessen, uh, we will be able to host more in live presentations as well. So once again, we want to thank everyone for coming and have a great evening. Now is everything is pretty much any leftover food. I wish we had, you know what, next time we do one of these, let's bring uh, to go containers. We could have just gave it to everyone, they could have took it home. I do have one thing to add, just as for everyone listening at home, for disclaimer purposes, everyone that took part in this presentation was fully vaccinated, uh, which will uh, help explain uh, the lack of the social distancing guidelines, which have been lightened. Uh, and the maskless participation today. To Thank you. For, uh, 15 people. We prepped a lot more. Yeah, he, they never listen. They never listen. But it's fine. You know what? No, I'm not doing this all night. Yes. Well, whenever you find a good sauce, I would tell you to... to, to you know, be a little adventurous. Try it on different things. No, absolutely not. I, I like to be uh, outside of the box. If I find something that I like, I start experimenting. You know, what goes with this, what goes with that. You know, uh, it's a dressing that I like to make at home, green goddess dressing. And I've come to find out it goes on everything. There's nothing that it doesn't taste good on. Uh, steak, chicken, fish, shrimp, vegetables, everything. So green goddess dressing. Uh, the base of it is uh, sour cream and mayonnaise. And then the standout ingredient in it is uh, tarragon vinegar and tarragon. But it also has green, uh, green onions, parsley, garlic, salt, pepper, um, red vinegar, um, in addition to the tarragon vinegar. I throw a little splash just because I like it or your tart. Um, but it, it, it goes great on everything. And this piece of equipment that I was telling you about, I put it all in a bowl and I just vroom, vroom, and it's done. Um, I have a herb garden. I don't have a vegetable garden because my green thumb is non-existent. And last year I did try to grow vegetables, but the Japanese beetles destroyed my garden. And I found out too late how to keep them away. It was it was no salvaging. Yeah, it was no salvaging. It. And I wanted to keep it all organic. And a lot of those sprays they don't really do the trick. You know, you need that the strong chemical stuff. And I don't, I didn't want to do that. Um, so this this year, you know, just a little herbs in the window. That's safer. No, no, beetles can't get to it there, you know. Um, that was right in the in the courtyard. They stopped it because of the community garden. Once the community garden got up and running, they took that garden uh, away, and they just focused on the community garden. I believe there was herbs there as well, but a lot of leaf, leaves. Yeah, right? Yeah. So I think that they wanted to kind of, 